What's going on guys? So I'm gonna make a cool video for you guys that I've been wanting to make for a while but haven't gotten around to it. And this is gonna be E36 versus E34, which car is the true king of the 90s BMW. I've had this idea kind of in my head, didn't know how I wanted to make it, but I figured, you know what? I just filmed that video about someone who's new to BMW, what models they should go for and whatnot, and clearly I picked these two if you've watched the video. So I figured, you know what? Let's make a direct comparison. Who is the true king of the 90s? I'm gonna go through all the features of both of these two cars and talk about what I like on one versus the other. So right off the bat, I have to disclaim, uh, that is a far from stock E34 525, and that is a far from stock E36 M3. Um, but that's more so drivability performance uh, mods. So I can't compare like the performance, right? That car outperforms the hell out of this car. Even this car, that is a fast, you know, built car. This is strictly basically aesthetics. Uh, that car used to be aesthetics, not so much anymore. So starting off with aesthetics, uh, I'll let you guys be the judge, and right off the bat, I can tell you my E34, even to me, is not my favorite looking car. Uh, when that was slammed on the throwing stars, I'm gonna put up a couple pictures. Because me, I'm extremely biased and um, just a fan of lowered, like slammed BMWs, so those will always take the cake. So if you ask me which one of these cars looks better, I'm gonna tell you the E36. The E36, hands down, looks better than that car. The M parallels are basic, the ride height is high, this thing is just could not be better. But that thing on the throwing stars, it was a neck and neck thing. It was, that, that came down to basically, are you a coupe or a sedan guy? Cause they both looked fire. So right off the bat, I'm gonna say that. I, I have to say from the start, E36, as these sit, takes the cake. Stock, both bone stock, I gotta say, I think I'm an E34 guy. I honestly think I am. Uh, just E36s, they look good, but just the wing makes it, the low weight makes it. Without that, it's whatever. Uh, given this is an M, that's not, but an M5 E34 is necessarily the exact same thing you're seeing, different front and rear bumper, and, and wheels, obviously, but because of that, I think it's still fair for me to compare the two because it's not like it's a totally different car. Um, same thing with that non-M versus an M E36. Undoubtedly, one of the best parts of the E36 is the modernness to it, meaning you have nice side skirts. E34s, this is a, a split color. It's not a 95, which would have painted, but in the most cases, they don't have painted side skirts and painted bottom of the bumpers, which makes it look kind of goofy. I like the all one color all the way through. Um, that's where you have to dock these cars. The uh, one odd thing that is about these cars, but I, you know, the way these are looks uh, good, but you'll see if you follow the bumper trims, so front and rear bumper, it's thicker than all the intermediate trim, meaning in between the wheels. So you can see it thins down. So you don't have a consistent um, trim thickness, which doesn't look bad on E34s. I think they pull it off, but it's kind of odd. And I think that's even how non-Ms are, but I will say this car in particular, an M3, you have the same thickness trim throughout the entire car, which I think gives it a very, very sleek, very cool look. Like it's just kind of wacky to have different size trims. You know, that gives it a uniform look, which I think is really sweet. Mirrors, I uh, love my early model elephant ears, but M3 mirrors take the cake, no doubt. These things are sweet. Non-M mirrors are pretty ugly, so I'll take the E34. From the front end, E36s look rad, but their biggest dock is plastic garbage headlights. If you're from Europe, you don't understand what I'm saying because they're glass, but these are junk, they're ugly. E34s, on the other hand, have the nice, iconic, dual circle headlights uh, and they are glass. These are euros, but even non euros, still glass. So that's better. Ignore my front end. This is uh, Alpina lip cut up and the intercooler really ugly. So that is kind of an unfair comparison. I think I'm a bigger fan of just the older style circular headlights, just, you know, the E30s got them, all the E24s, E28, E12. I really do love that look. 
on to uh, wheel specs. I gotta say, without the felony forms, E36s, junk. They do not fit anything. I think pushing it of the rear of an E36 is like a nine wide. And I think that's like very much pushing it. E34s, they'll take a 10, I mean stock quarter. This is a nine and a half with a thick tire and I got room to go. I fit nines, I fit uh, nothing. I've never gone bigger than nine and a half just because I haven't found wheels for that. But I mean, you can see nine and a half is still sunken in actually a lot. Uh, I know people fit tens, stock body. You could probably fit ten and a half. So it might look a little weird, but E34s for sure can fit the best specs, the bigger wheels, bigger lifts. This is obviously felony form, so it's a way different story. These are ten and a halfs in the rear and tens up front, which uh, E34 you can't go wider than a nine up front. The prime like fitment E34 spec in the front, I'm gonna give you guys a little tip of advice here, is a nine inch wide with the ET about zero. That is the key to front fitment on an E34. Rear, there's a lot of different things you could do. So that's my little tip to you guys, but it's unfair with you, when you got wide body like this. Window trims, E36s got this junk rubber that degrades really easily, and this stuff discolors, fades, uh, got a docket there, E34, you got chrome, baby. That is, uh, can't get any classier than that. So E34 takes the cake there. The chrome can get pretty beat up, but in general, the black on these cars gets a lot more beat up. Uh, windshield cowl on E36s, cracks really bad. You can see this one, very cracked up. This car, I actually just painted it, so it's unfair, but, so it looks really good, but it, they don't crack. They, uh, they fade, and you could really easily paint them. You could see how good that looks. So I gotta give it there on the E34. Better design, more durable. You gotta figure when you're looking at an E36 versus an E34, you're looking at a three series versus a five series, and obviously five series are always the higher end, right? More luxury. And I'm gonna show you guys, you'll really see that when we get, I think, to the interior and a few other things I wanna point out. Uh, you'll really notice that. On to the uh, suspension. So obviously I'm not gonna jack up both these cars and show you guys the suspension, but E34s have an ancient style with the uh, subframe that's like a beam and your R-tabs have no adjustment. You can't align the rear on these cars unless you weld in toe plates. E36s are king there. You have a lot of rear adjustment, toe, everything, but you blow through the R-tabs. And uh, this car, this car has, I think, stock R-tabs and it's got like 255K on it. So that rear end is a lot more durable and while i'm on the uh while i'm on the back i want to say subframe no subframe issues e36s same with e46s they have the infamous subframe cracks uh rear axle carrier cracks if that's how you want to say um and that's a huge dock that is the worst thing of e36s the rear ends are made of glass uh I'm sure you guys know, maybe if you don't know, look into it. If you want an E36, I would definitely recommend checking that out. It's very important when you buy one, you need to have um, you need to have the reinforcement done. And this car, while they're ugly, has the plates, they're welded in, they're hideous, but the uh, rear um, top mounts want to have plates there, even the fronts. The mushroom, t or the uh, shock towers in the front will mushroom and crack. I've seen it firsthand. E34s have no sorts of issues like that. There's no such thing as a rear cracking subframe. There's no such thing as blowing out your front uh, towers. Uh, that just goes to show you the, the build quality of an E34 versus an E36. To have a car, and that goes for both of these, I'm not just dissing the E36. To have a car made by BMW, made by any brand, that you have to weld in plates to literally save your like entire car from shredding, is I mean, it's ridiculous. You you shouldn't buy a car that you have to worry about your subframe falling out. Like the trunk cracks, the trunk floor, like that's insane. And that is the biggest, and that you can ask anyone, that is the biggest disability that the E36s have over anything. That is their biggest flaw of all time is the freaking rear axle carrier pan. It's, it's just weak, weak rear ends, Strong, very strong. E34s do not have chassis issues. I think I may have heard of a few guys that have noticed like some like cracking, like I don't, but you don't know how those cars were driven. E34s are older cars. That's a 99, that's a 92. They stopped E34s in 95, they stopped these in 99. Um, so you already gotta figure that's a more ancient of a car. And like I was saying with the suspension, front end, 
Biggest flaw about that car, steering box, no rack. These have a modernized rack. It's very responsive, it's nicer turning. That is an older style box. They get very sloppy, they're harder to turn, which to me is not a con. I don't mind heavy turning, that's why I love E46s. It's the last BMW to basically have like mechanical steering feel, not electric. So that is all just goofy uh, tie rods that are super annoying to like undo, ball joints I mean. Uh, the, all the control arms, control arms blow out on those really easily. The front upper control arms go bad. E36s, I can't attest, I haven't uh, had one. This car, the suspension's gone through. I haven't had to do it myself, so I'm not, I can't say for sure. But I know the infamous 55 mile an hour shake is really common on those. I don't know about these. So in terms of chassis structuralness, E34s win, hands down. Much more solid of a chassis, much more solid suspension. Uh, given it's older style and it might not perform as well as one of these cars that's nicely gone through in the long run it's just more durable more solid of suspension so E34 takes the cake there before I forget while we're on the outside the biggest flaw with the E34 I told you about the subframe on these or I will the biggest issue with the E34s is BMW's design to put these trims down here these are painted trims that basically clip onto the bottom of the doors and you can see on my own car I try not to show it because it's embarrassing you can see a little bit of rust there uh, finding a clean E34 is really hard especially up uh, in the Midwest in Chicago where I am because those stupid trims trap water and when they trap water and salt they make the doors rust and that is why most E34s you see will have rusty doors my wagon is a gem with no door rust but these freaking things doors will rust just like that I, this car i bought it totally rust free from kansas city by the time i was done daily driving it one winter boom i had that rust a little bit on the other door the rears are good and then that trim as you can kind of tell it just bends that trim itself rusts because there's metal inside of it and it just deforms so you can see how ugly that looks so that is the e34's biggest body flaw no doubt e36s don't have that stupid ass trim so you just got door here so that ain't gonna rust in terms of other rust between the two chassis, aside from the door rust on the E34s, uh, I'd say between E34 and E36, they're both about the same. They'll both rust out pretty, uh, pretty good if they're not taken care of. Uh, both cars, the uh, rear quarters behind the wheels will rust just because that's where all the dirt and stuff gets kicked up when driving. I will say though, I see that way more on E36s than E34s. So the E34 might have it there. I will say though, I've seen E36s rust a lot on these uh, trunk plates. E34s, I've never seen them rust around here, no matter how beat up the car is. I've never seen this rust, but I do see them rust up here, but E36s also rust up there. So that's kind of a, um, that's kind of a, t a tie between the two in terms of rust. They both, uh, they both rust more than they should, but it's, it's their age. You can't really do anything about it. So you gotta live with it and you gotta just find a clean one. And I guess if you guys are watching this from South or California or whatever, then you don't even know what the hell I'm talking about. But when you're from Midwest, if you know my pain, if you're, you know, Chicago, Michigan, Indiana, whatever, you know what I'm talking about. It's hard to find a clean car out here. In terms of engine bays, you guys know, uh, non-Ms come with the M50 B25. It's a 325. Since this is older, it never came with the M52 OBD2. So that, that wasn't an option. But the M3 is either an S50 or an S52, both very decent motors, but the M5 is an S38, which is a badass ITB motor. Both of those were not ITB. So the M motor option, M5 takes the cake. It is a very cool, more ancient, I'll give you that, but a much cooler motor, much more horsepower than the M3. And that is just all I gotta say there. But regardless of the M's, E34 engine bay, you can see that turbo. You can see how much room I got there for the downpipe and everything. E34, obviously meaning it's a bigger car, means more engine space. So when you're looking to do uh, modifications to the engine, this is the car to do it on. Everything is way easier to access. There's not a single thing that you have to do maintenance wise on an E34 that is a pain, meaning like not enough space. But I will tell you on an E36, knowing I've had first-hand experience with the use of this car, 
with the turbo. It is hard to fit the turbo. It is, everything's really tight. Uh, E34s don't have that issue and I'll show you that. And I gotta say, reverse opening hood, regular opening hood, way cooler to have a reverse opening hood. But yeah, here you can see what I mean. Uh, just, there's like hardly any room there. So imagine putting a turbo on this thing. And this is the same with an M15, S50, whatever. You don't have any room over here. You gotta definitely take that out. I mean, I had to take mine out too, the uh, power or the uh, washer fluid tank. But I mean, that's a tight gap. E34, nowhere near that tight. Uh, otherwise, not that anything in this engine bay is that hard to work on either. But you have a cowl that's over your manifold. You don't have that over there. So the intake manifold is harder to take off on these cars. Um, cooling system, I made that video. It's a little bit more confusing just because everything's like implemented into the shroud, which is really, in my opinion, kind of stupid. Uh, but that could just be me E34 fanboying right there. So now we're gonna get into the interiors. And before I even do that, I just have to point out one thing. And this will do all the speaking for itself. Car's unlocked, right? Door won't work. What you gotta do is, I won't be able to film it, push down on the door, and there you go. I was able to film it. And that's how you open your door. That's a typical E36 thing, apparently. Uh, Freaking door handles hardly work. Uh, I gotta say, I've owned a lot of E34s. And I've never had one that didn't just open. So, you're gonna have to dock the E36 there because that's just stupid. And it really bothers me. I don't even know what the fix is. But, very easy to open this door. So, aside from that, get in the E36. Uh, magmas in the M3. Way over, way cooler, way better than anything that's in the E34. Even the M seats. You cannot beat... A Vader seat. These are the sickest M seats BMW has ever dropped. You can argue me on that, but I know that these are the best. So that takes the cake. Non M E36 seats, junk. I take an E34 comfort seat all day. So that's not really fair comparison because, like I said, this isn't an M versus an M. This is E36 versus E34. Uh, so that's not really valid. But aside from that, stock wheel in E36, this is a 99, hideous wheel. Uh, stock wheel and E34, hideous. I don't have the stock wheel, as you'll see. My wagon has a stock wheel, so if you've watched my videos and see my wagon interior, you'll know. But otherwise, gauge cluster, E36, E34. Uh, I can't really say which one I like better. That's that's kind of a, just a basic thing. Um, E36s have rear headrests. Non-M E34s do not. Uh, I think I prefer the look of no rear headrest, to be honest. Dash, E36s have the flat, uh, same material, I believe, but E36s have the flat dash. And then E34, more of a shelf. It's got the cool little uh, not, no airbag pouch there. Uh, I think E34 dash is better looking. Door cards, magma door cards, which are cool. These are in good condition, but door cards, that's, I think, the most common E36 joke is that the door cards just fall off. So you'll, you'll if you've owned an E36, I'm sure it's happened to you, door cards just fall off the door, they're cheap. This all uh, morphs and warps and doesn't fit. These get all warped up. Uh, these crack, as you can see, mine has a crack. E34 door cards will also fall off and are also kind of iffy, as you can see with mine, it's falling off. I need to replace the clips. But otherwise, nice leather there, nice leather here, wood, solid. I'd say E34s have have cooler, nicer, higher quality feeling door cards than E36s for sure. But it's just a common old BMW thing. They all just fall off. So can't really give one car that versus the other. They're both kind of junky, to be honest. Headliner, I got black suede. E34s never came with black headliner. So even the, uh, oh, the M's did, all M's did. But otherwise, with a black interior, you get a gray headliner, which is iffy. E36s, I believe, are the same. My E36 has no headliner, which looks cool and uh, matches the interior, but I got to get one. Um, window regulators go bad on both cars, so you can't give one that versus the other. They're both junk. Uh, what else? Center console. This is... Plastic, 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 plastic. Uh, what else? Plastic. So, not very nice. I do gotta say, I do like the look of it, but just plastic, cheap plastic, everything's cheap plastic. Let's go over to the E34 and check it out. Uh, 
Um, this is the center console. Uh, I believe it's the same. This feels a little better, a little higher quality. I think these are more stable. The interior in general on E34 is just much more stable. It's a much nicer, higher quality. So I gotta say it's hard to compare, but E34 is definitely nicer. E34's got armrests, which are sweet and luxurious. E34s have cooler check controls, in my opinion, the more old style. They got the nice twist dials, which are, I think, uh, less failure prone than the newer E36 ones. Uh, I can't say for sure. I'm not positive. I gotta say, E36, you do got cup holders. That's a nice plus there. You got the change holder, the cup holders, which, if you'll know, E34s do not have cup holders. That's the 80s design in the E34s. No cup holders, just a storage tray, which works nice, but isn't uh, all that. So E36 takes the win there. Back seat, obviously you got more room in a sedan, but that's the back seat. And that's the back seat. Rear decks always fade, can't hate on either one. Uh, electric seats, electric seats. E36s did come with manual. Manual is a plus because they don't break like electrics do. I don't believe there's an option in the E36s for uh, manual seats or E34s. Um, I will also say E34s always get seat twist. Common thing, if you know E34s, you know what I'm talking about, the infamous seat twist. You can see that seat's a little bit twisted. I fixed it, but I didn't straighten it, so it's uneven, so that sucks. But um, I don't think E36s really get that. Uh, mine doesn't, I haven't seen any other ones do. So I can't say for sure, don't quote me on that. Trunk space, obviously five series trunk. I mean, you can see how far back. I got a big 12 back here and a lot of junk. Uh, E36, I don't even know. I mean, like this even matters, right? But not as big, still pretty spacious though, I gotta say, actually, I got a 10 inch back here. So it's not even that bad, but obviously E34, five series will have a bigger uh, trunk space. I think that about wraps it up for the interior. Uh, they're both nice, but they both have their flaws and I think a lot of the flaws they have are the same among all Because just that's just an old BMW thing to have just cheap plastics and degrading plastics and all that Oh one more important thing door seals E36s to my knowledge don't have door seal issues You can see these sit nice flush aren't shrunk aren't ripped up E34s and I replace these they shrink they fall apart and they shrink like right there it's not even all the way down there's a couple fixes for that but still nonetheless it's an annoying thing you can see my driver's side one is the only one i haven't replaced and while it's not shrunk it's just really gross and beat up so gotta give the e36 uh, credits on that as for exhaust notes they'll obviously all sound the same if they have the same engine m5 i think sounds rad s52 sounds decent i'll put in a sound clip This car's got a muffler delete, so it's a little loud, obnoxious, and obviously the turbo car sounds 10 times better. So that's more so personal taste and what's done to the car and all that. Um, one other thing is aftermarket modification support. E36 has 10 times more aftermarket things you can do. Wide body, uh, what are they called? Aerodynamic kits just wings, you know, whatever. I mean, mirrors, all that. You got rare parts, carbon fiber interior parts. E34s really do not have market like that. They, they didn't have, it's just a harder car to do it with. Like, you're not gonna throw a wing on an E34. You're not gonna throw like wide body. You're not gonna throw the aerodynamic kits like side skirts, bumpers and stuff. So you really are much more limited to like changing up the style of your car. Um, interior, same way. Like I have an M5 shift surround on that car. But aside from that, there's not that much cool stuff you can really do. Uh, you know, wheel, shift knob, wheels, suspension, that's obviously the same for both. So, but I like in terms of like the markets for rare parts, I've seen a lot more E36 and E34 stuff. But I do know there is some really rad E34 things, more on the like side of luxury things, like a cooler for the back, or, like from a seven series and uh, like rear electric seats and stuff like that, that those cars don't have because that's a sports car, that's a luxury car. So I think I touched on everything, but that brings me into like a nice conclusion here. I gave you guys the differences, I gave you guys the pros and the cons, but at the end of the day, that is a sports car, that is a luxury car. 
You can do sports car activities with that and luxury car activities with that. But when it comes down to it, depending on which one you're looking for, as I told you guys, that is faster than an M, right? But it doesn't have the handling capabilities of an M. My M3, I would add driving. Uh, disclaimer, I would add a driving, like how they feel to drive. But that car, as it sits, is it drives, obviously, but it, you know, it doesn't go fast. It doesn't go hard cornering. So I can't give you guys a nice you know, E36 pushing it to the limit versus a E34 to the limit. That car is much more set up for driving like that. But at the end of the day, I know just off firsthand experience with Eustace and other M's, an E36 M3 well put together for a track is going to outhandle an E34. And that is just has to do with the suspension stuff you can do. Like you can't really do much camber on those cars. You can do a lot more on these. Um, so E36s are just a better handling car in general. I can tell you the guys that without even going for a drive. I don't have to go for a drive and explain and pinpoint everything. But the way they're set up, it's, it's vice versa with my two. But when it comes down to actually driving experience and, or driving uh, enjoyment, E46 M3 is where it's at. Best handling M car, I don't care what you say. So that's just, I want to touch on that. But that's, again, that's just my little disclaimer to you. Sports car, non-sports car, more luxury, less luxury. But I just want to touch, point out all the differences and the pros and the cons to each of these cars. Uh, again, I think I touched on everything. Uh, they have a lot of similarities, but they have, uh, they have their differences. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope this taught you something. I hope it showed you something. I hope maybe it made you want an E34 or an E36. I know my buddy Christian Lewis, AKA the stash man, go on his channel. He just posted uh, what he hates about his E36. He's gonna post what he loves. He's an E34 guy like me. He's my E34 brother. So if you want a lot of E34, like, driving experiences and all, just a lot of more stuff about E34, go to his channel, check him out. Um, this is just my kind of take owning both these cars for well over a year now. Um, that's just, I just want to do a comparison. The king of the 90s. Uh, let's see. Do I, am I able to give you guys my thoughts on the king of the 90s? This is hard. It's like picking like your favorite kid. I, you know, I'm not picking which one I like more, but I'm just saying which of these cars would I consider the king of its era? Uh, I gotta say, E34. Um, you watch the video, you know, just much more well put together, sturdy car. These cars have stupid issues, door cards, subframes. I mean, a lot of people talk cr trash about E36s. They're just not that put together. There's a lot of cut corners. There's a lot of cheaper stuff. These cars are 110% more well put together. If you're looking for a driver's car, go with the E36. If you're looking for a luxury car, go with the E34. That is a given, but you could do both with that. This, it's hard to get that luxury out of. It's just more sporty in any way. Both of these aren't coilovers, so I can't talk to you about stock suspension handling, but the M5 was a beast. E36 M3, kind of a disappointment, at least in the United States. So that right there, I gotta say, Five series all day, E34 is the king of the 90s. Come at me if you want, that's my opinion. So I hope I didn't miss anything. If I did, comment what you, like, what you think between the two. Let me know your thoughts on what I chose. Um, otherwise, I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed.